Alhamdulillah syukur kehadirat ilahi dengan limpah kurninya dan izinnya dapat kita berkumpul pada pagi ini untuk khusus Hightel siri keempat yang bertajuk Curating Great Learning Experience and Assessment. Betul Doktor? Betul. Betul berkerut je? Betul eh? Betul. Okay. <laughs> Pihak kami mengucapkan ribuan terima kasih dan mengalu-alukan kehadiran tuan-tuan dan perempuan. Terlebih dahulu saya akan memperkenalkan penceramah kita pada hari ini. Penceramah kita ialah Profesor Madya Teknologis Dr. Samsung Nur Azlan merupakan pencerah kanan di Fakulti Pendidikan di Universiti Teknologi Mara. Beliau mempunyai PhD dalam bidang pendidikan, perkhususan dalam bidang IT dan Computing Education. His area of expertise in curriculum di Portfolio or Alternative Assessment, Learning and Predictive Analysis. Dr. Samsul uh, banyak terlibat dalam kajian inovasi dan bagi aktif dalam bidang penyelidikan. Saya ada Google pasal doktor, saya ada nampak uh, pendidikan beliau setakat ni dah 32 hasil. Jadi memang banyak, terutama dalam bidang e-portfolio yang terkini lah saya tengok. Okey, tanpa membuang masa, saya serahkan majlis kepada Dr. Samsul untuk meneruskan ceramah, ceramah beliau. Alright. Um, terima kasih Farah. Okey, dan juga Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And very good morning. Alhamdulillah. Um, terima kasih kepada UITM um, Cawangan Perak atas penganjuran uh, webinar ini. Dan uh, I think that um, Uh, ada banyak bila saya tengok uh, pada promosi yang dilakukan oleh UITM Perak ada banyak inisiatif-inisiatif yang telah dijalankan and mostly um, the, the the webinar that you are su uh, suggested is timely and also uh, is very important for us lah and Alhamdulillah uh, dan sepanjang I think that sepanjang uh, ber, uh, bermulanya MCO pada 18 Mac hari itu sehingga lagi hari ini saya, saya yakin lah rata-rata most of the educators um, upskilling themselves day by day to make sure that uh, they can get be ready and insyaAllah and hari ni sebenarnya I think that uh, more likely I, I will share with you uh, the insights of me and um, I think that uh, selain daripada berkongsi uh, the best part is how we want to reflect ourselves I think that some of the uh, slide presentation is actually uh, how we can reflect ourselves and uh, to make sure that uh, that we are ready and how to make sure that uh, if, we are, if we are not ready and how to make sure that we can uh, upskilling and retooling ourselves to make sure that uh, at the end of the day kita berjaya melaksanakan tanggungjawab kita sebagai pensyarah and uh, I do agree that uh, with uh, this kind of time uh, banyak perubahan-perubahan uh, yang perlu dilakukan oleh pensyarah-pensyarah dan juga uh, banyak perkara-perkara yang perlu dilihat semula oleh pensyarah-pensyarah dalam memastikan uh, pengkuliahan dapat dijalankan uh, dengan baik dan I think that uh, tak ada siapa pun sebenarnya yang ingin uh, awak kata apa uh, uh, ingin uh, kegagalan dalam dalam setiap kuliah mereka I think that most of the lecturer want to do their best to make sure that uh, we can give the students learning experience at the same time also we can uh, assess them dan kita juga dapat uh, uh, menjalankan uh, pengajaran kita dengan dengan baik so insyaAllah and uh, as for today Um, saya nak kongsikan kepada tuan-tuan dan puan-puan um, terlebih dahulu Okay, sebentar ya Alright um, This is the topic uh, topic given uh, by the uh, organizer. So I think that um, we are now uh, not uh, not just looking at uh, to provide uh, to provide a student with uh, the information of learning, but also uh, the most the most important part is how to ensure that we can curate a great learning experience and assessment. So the reason why um, I uh, suggest uh, suggested this topic because of um, we are not uh, only share with the student only just the declarative knowledge but also we have to share with the student uh, the learning experience but how to make sure that the learning experience uh, can be uh, can be more interesting and how does the assessment 
can be related with the learning experience. So that's the reason why the creating great learning experience is very important. And I think that um, not only uh, in the physical classroom, but how to make sure that we also can give the learning experience uh, through online learning and whatnot. So these are topic for today, inshallah. And I just want to share with you uh, one video uh, from uh, on on the on the insights of uh, assessment evaluation at UITM. Have a see. The increasing interest in new sources of data for personalizing and profiling the learning experience, formative and summative assessment are seldom stand alone in assessing learning and learner performance. For learners, educators, and researchers, assessment as learning analytics is already starting to provide crucial insight into student progress through accessibility, engagement, experience, and the ultimate one is the innovation of knowledge. Alternative and innovative assessment is more interactive way in measuring student knowledge, skills and ability, and also have a potential to change how we measure learning and delivery. The new paradigm of assessment is looking at the capability of diagnosing, interpreting descriptively in quantitative and qualitative reasoning, also predicting the learning behavior for the quality improvement in teaching, learning, and assessment. In the destructive in advancement of technology, destructive in education, we also need to prepare ourselves for the incoming destructive we call as a destructive pedagogy. Assessment as learning analytics to ensure that we can overcome issues and challenges in education. Welcome to the CD Alternative Assessment and ePortfolio. If learning acts as an exploration, then the technology equips the explorer for the journey of lifetime. <laughs> All right, um, there's a, a little bit of uh, introduction about the assessment and evaluation as a whole. So we can see that uh, how does the assessment not only provide us some kind of uh, diagnostic data and also the descriptive, but also how to make sure that we can predict the human behavior. And this is will help us on uh, uh, designing a great learning experience to the students. So uh, as for today, uh, normally uh, this is my uh, my special slide for all the participants, the online adult for the following participant webinar. Uh, you also can mute your, uh, I hope you can mute your microphone also, you can unmute if you have a question. I hope that uh, this session can be more interactive if you have a question and also I will uh, always look on the chat box uh, if you have a question and I try to my best to answer all the questions and you can use the chat room. And I think that uh, this webinar, of course, uh, not only uh, for the live streaming, but also used uh, to be recorded uh, for the training purposes. And, uh, and, and before that, I will, I will thank you uh, for your cooperation. I hope uh, that we can have a small sailing of the uh, webinar. And this is just a little bit of me, okay? All right, okay, uh, before we start, um, I want to do some kind of um, self-assessment. So can you uh, scan this QR code? Okay. Or I will share with you the link. Wait, yeah. All right. Provide to you uh, the link. And also, I will share with you the QR code. Okay. okay this is the QR code. Yeah, you may can use your uh, mobile phone, uh, scan this QR code, and um, I would like you to um, give me some kind of insight. What do you understand about? What do you know about the curations? And also the second question, uh, look on uh, the little scale of your understanding about uh, three areas. So, 
Okay. Is it all of you can get access uh, from this QR code? Yes, doctor. Yes. All right. Okay. Uh, so now um, I will shift into the Mentimeter. All right. So these are the results. Interesting. So what do you know about the creations? Okay. So if you see the bigger, um, uh, the bigger, for, uh, the bigger words here is the most uh, popular uh, text by the participants. All right. So we can see lots of it. All right. I hope we uh, we can hope we can have more. All right. Interesting. Uh, some set of designing selections, the collection of content, organizing. Okay, organizing become bigger now. And what more? Meet the objective. All right. It's a lot. All right. Okay, looks like it organizing selection also design become uh, become uh, the biggest keyword here. But also uh, I can see here the not sure uh, at the fourth at the fourth option. All right, creating become bigger also. So we have a lot. So this is how you can use um, uh, the the tools to make sure that all right. Okay. Uh, 25 of you answering these um, questions. All right. Okay. Never mind. So now what we con we what we can uh, can conclude here is uh, you understand that the curation is something to do with the selection, organizing informations, how you design the learning experience, and how does the information provide not only to the uh, not only used to the uh, educators but also for the students all right so we go for the next questions this is other skills how much uh, how many of you that understand uh, the learning design learning experience and also the assessment for learning um, based on your knowledge all right so Okay, this is very important because of we want to understand the background of the the participants, all right? Because of we are talking something that uh, related to us, and uh, this will help me to ensure that I can focus uh, uh, a few uh, a few uh, important notes uh, for you to understand, all right? So it looks like um, almost equal in terms of the graph. We have uh, 16, 17 participants already uh, give the skills here. All right. So we hope that a few numbers more coming in. Twenty-two. Oh, nampak macam nak uh, ke arah moderate. All right. So okay, never mind. I give you a few more moment for you to join this uh, Likert skills. All right. Okay. Now, now one. So we made cut off twenty seven. So if we can see from the Likert skills, I think that uh, most of us about moderate in terms of uh, learning design also experience and assessment of the uh, for learning may be something that we need to discuss further and more uh, to make sure that oh the regi also all right i think that most more likely we are moderate at, uh, we are moderate here so never mind um this is very good indication to make sure that um, when we talk about the learning experience and assessment in this context um, i think that most of the participants or lots of you have a question about it all right thank you for participating uh, this uh this survey all right okay we're back to our business All right, I think that this slide already given to the organizer. So inshallah, the organizer will share uh, with all the participants here. And yes, when we talk about um, 
technology. We do agree that um, we use the technology not only for uh, our daily basis, we use the technology for our social interactions and also as educators, we use the um, technology uh, to create our digital content. And I for sure that um, most of us have our own digital content, uh, whether we uh, save it in our uh, computer, we save it in our uh, pen drive, we save it in our cloud or whatever, but I think most probably most of us have our uh, digital content. And in the settings of technology also, um, the educator also can leverage the technology to create engaging and personalized uh, learning environment to meet the educational needs of this generation. So meaning that um, when as educators, uh, we are not only facing on uh, the challenges or to conduct our teaching and learning, but also we have a challenges in terms of facing the different generations and also how we as educators can use the opportunity of 21st century learning design and focus on preparing students to be a learner for life. So this is how the technology affects us uh, in the context of uh, teaching and learning. And yes, uh, no doubt when we talk about the technology, okay, uh, there's a lot of destructive happen. Uh, it's not only uh, happened into the industry of um, um, finance and banking, not only uh, disruptive in the context of um, uh, business uh, in the industry, in the pub, uh, oil and gas, in the industry of um, uh, manufacturing or not, but education also impact with the with the uh, the advancements the, the advancements of technology. So uh, when we talk about the destructive in the pedagogy, meaning that we have to face that the change in the learning and teaching process. And when we talk about pedagogy, it's not only about the way of teaching. So it's not about we uh, come to the class and conduct our teaching learning as usual, but also we have a few variables that may be affected us the way we deliberate, the way we deliver our teaching learning. And of course, when we talk about pedagogy, uh, we are not only talk about the content, but we should drive our contextual process and support with the technology. And we do understand that um, individuals have a diversity in terms of the needs, in terms of the learning style, in terms of the instructions, and many more, and it's crucial. And as educators, we need to understand this and we need to do kind of the need analysis to make sure that uh, we can cater these students, uh, this differentiation of the students, and we have to come up with our solutions. And when we talk about the solutions, uh, the, the solution that we give uh, is not um, absolutely right. Somehow, rather, uh, we also uh, have to face that somehow it can be a failure when we conduct our strategy, and somehow we learn from that. And this is how this is very important because of. Uh, when happen uh, the failures and how do you want to do the intervention? This is the process of educators need to be uh, to be aware, and we as educators have to learn from this journey. And and when we talk about the destructive in pedagogy, we sure that um, as I mentioned before, we are dealing with the learning behaviors and experience. And for sure that uh, bila kita berhadapan dengan pelajar-pelajar, of course they have a differentiation in terms of the way they learn. And um, I think that um, uh, there, there, there's a basic simples of uh, theory uh, I can share with you here. If you know that the theory of visual, auditory and kinesthetics, this is one of the theory that distinguish uh, or to uh, identify the differentiation of learners. Because of uh, not all of the students have the same attributes uh, when they come to the class or they join the webinar, they have a different kind of uh, learning style. There's some students and uh, maybe if, we, if I uh, bring up the uh, visual, auditory and kinesthetic theory in this context, uh, most of the students are more like to learn using auditory. They love to 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 to, to listen your voice. They love they, they love to to learn uh, using text, PowerPoint, and whatnot. But somehow, rather, kita juga kena kena akui bahawa uh, some of the students love to learn through visual, and maybe also some of the students love to learn through kinesthetic, meaning that they want to kind of have a movement in the classroom. So 
this is also might be impacted uh, to our uh, teaching session and not only uh, uh, not only uh, visual auditory and kinesthetic but also there's a few there's a more theory um, can assess on the learner on the learner behavior and experiences i think that um, the most uh, theory that we always keep um, uh, discussing or mentioning uh, we talk about the generation gap so maybe some of you know about the baby boomers generation x y z and alpha this is are the generation gap also impacted in our pedagogy and how we handle the students and of course yes when we talk about um, the destructive uh, pedagogy is more like the voluntary activity participation we want the student to actively engage with the learning we want the student to really really responsible with the learning and also we want the student to be to create their yeah, meaningful learning in the classroom or in the online training so instead of that uh, when they come voluntarily we also as educators need to ensure that we need to design a good higher order thinking skills and how we can use the negotiation skills in our classroom. I think that uh, the reason why I, I highlighted the negotiation skill in, in, uh, in the classroom, uh, whether in the physical classroom or in the virtual classroom, the, because of, uh, I think that I give one the best example when we are uh, facing the ODL, uh, open distancing, especially for those uh, in UITM. Um, in the process of ODL, because of the student, also the lectures are quite new in this kind of modes. Uh, the negotiation is, is very important thing because of the negotiation, how do you interact with the students and how do you, do you and the students collaborate and also uh, overcome the issue. So when we talk about negotiation, it's not about uh, you only as educators, but also considering many factors such as students, environment, infrastructure and whatnot to make sure that we can negotiate and we can strategize our, uh, our uh, teaching and learning. And um, for sure that uh, we, when we talk about um, uh, teaching and learning, the social engagement is very important because of I think that most of the students love to engage among their peers but with our condition now most of the students work on silo they work individually and the social learning decreasing and how we as educators can create an activity to make them socialize and also to make them collaborate with their peers and not only sitting uh, and thinking individually about themselves so i think that uh, when we conduct online learning when i do a survey also do some kind of reading uh, the social element become decreasing because of we work on isolations and i think that these are the things need to be uh, to be uh, the main focus when we conduct our online uh, teaching and learning and of course yes as a uh, educators uh, we are not only uh, delivering our uh, content, but how make, to make sure that we can make the learning more enjoy and we bring the context in our learning. I think that we have to make sure that the enjoyment and the excitement of learning should be in place because of we want the student get the knowledge, but not only, not, not, not only get the knowledge, but also can use the knowledge for, for, for their future. All right. So this is how this, the destructive in pedagogy impacted in our uh, teaching learning, especially in the pandemic COVID now, and how how can we design the best learning for the students. All right. So when we talk about the destructive in pedagogy, uh, we also notice that uh, the bring your own device BYOD. I think that the terms of BYOD have been introduced for quite some times long time ago and i think that when the pandemic COVID um, happened in malaysia and also around the world the bring your own device become so important because and the people start relying on their own device to make sure that they can do their work as usual and having that the bring uh, your uh, bring your own device and whatnot and the people start creating uh, the content they start to create um, the the resources and start to share with any platform such maybe on the facebook on the uh, linkedin on the youtube or even can you can use all the low tech technologies such whatsapp telegrams uh, emails or whatever to make sure that at the end of the day 
we can get the student access through the content that we provide to them. So again, as I mentioned as a before slide, the social learning is very important and how does we uh, try to overcome uh, to make sure that the social learning can be happen in our uh, in our online training or in uh, whether asynchronous or synchronous and how does we want to make sure that the student can collaborate virtually without having face to face i think this is, this is very important and when we talk about the all the technology of course yes uh, we talk about the learning spaces uh, we hope that uh, we can uh, do at anywhere at any time with anyone so the learning spaces become so important and we do agree that when the, the COVID pandemic happened the learning spaces of our classroom uh, is totally changed we not on uh, we are not uh, anymore facing uh, we not anymore uh, have a physical class we have a virtual class and we need to give that kind of atmosphere and also uh, and a different atmosphere in the classroom and how to make the classroom more interesting and this is how the technology becomes so important and how you you do you use the technology to fulfill all these requirements and provide students with the personalized learning and uh, i do agree that when we conduct the open distance learning uh, current this point at current uh, at this point uh, the personalization uh, plays important role because of uh, we need to cater the, the individual differentiations the the instruction differentiation and this is how the personalizations uh, take place and uh, I, dalam bahasa lain saya senang kata macam nilah uh, every each of the students need a different treatments but how we as educators can overcome this I give you one example. Kalau kalau kelas tu 30 orang, then that should be should be no problem. But how about the students have about 100, 200 students? Is it possible for us to personalize them? All right. So these are the things that I need. We need to 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 to, to ponder and we need to discuss about it. All right. So yes. Um. I think that uh, I love to share this slide. I think that I I share this uh, this slide quite frequent because of this is uh, the the basic. Uh, models that can be applied and the simplest model that I can share with you. I think that when we try to create um, the learning atmosphere with uh, by by meet uh, the learning outcome to ensure that the student can achieve the learning outcome, we can give the student the great grade, uh, the the great uh, grades, uh, the great marks, and also to make sure that they, they can excel in their in their journey of uh, uh, of learning. Uh, at the, the university, we need to create the opportunity of success from the accessibility to innovation. And this is my experience of 12 years when I conduct my teaching and learning. I do um, agree that this all four dimension is very important. And this is how I, I, I conclude uh, myself and how, how do I see my student now. So uh, if you can see at this uh, diagram, there's a four level here. All right. So we start with the accessibility. All right. So the level number one. So I think that most of us understand that uh, as educators, our part and role is to make sure that we can give the student access through our learning materials or resources. That, that's our, our norm job. All right. So I think that most of you have your PowerPoint, most of you have your Word document, most of, most of, most of you have your PDF document and your part at your learning management systems, your part at your web 2.0 tools to make sure that the student can get access. But that one just at a level one, accessibility to ensure that the student can get access. But the, the level number two is more important when we when we as educators look look at how does the learner can engage with the learning? How does the learning materials can really, really engage with the students? And how does the student can contribute back, can, can contribute back, uh, contribute back to us and give us the meaning of learning? So that's the reason why when we are producing our uh, learning materials, uh, don't think only to give them the accessibility and we should think on how does the learning materials can be engaging, can be meaningful to the students and how we as educators bring it in the contextual learning and active the participant uh, and, and active the learning using that learning materials. So meaning that the student can use the learning material and engage with the learning materials. 
All right. So at level number three, if we can provide the student with the experience, okay. So we as educators, uh, I suggest that we can provide the real mimic situation that enhance learning experience and design lesson that allows students to think creatively, reflect and react into the situation. I think that the learning experience can be happen by providing them a problem solving and after that they are reflecting and react on that situation and i do agree that when we uh, doing our online training is difficult for us to give that kind of learning experience but uh, i for sure I, I can sure that we can we can give the student learning experience but the, the learning experience must be by design not by chance so meaning that you can give the experience through webinar you can give the experience through your online training as compared then as usual you conduct as a face-to-face -face, uh, classroom and i will share with you how do i conduct my open distance learning and how i how how, how can i ensure that the student really really can get the experience same as the face uh face to face in the classroom all right so uh when we talk at level number four is the ultimate level is when the students can innovate can create not only become the co-creator of knowledge but the explorator of knowledge and this is how the student uh regulate their knowledge regulate their capability to make sure that they are not only using the knowledge but they are applying the knowledge into the higher stakes and this is how uh, we as educators want to produce our students to become more independent. They have their own wisdom and thought. All right. So, all right. So when we talk about creating learning, uh, creating great learning experience assessment, as educators, we must understand also we must master this learning domain. I think that most of educators, you should master this learning domain. I think that most of you know about this, all right? So the learning domain that I mentioned here is we need to understand on the cognitive, affective, and psychomotor learning domain to make sure that we can create a good learning experience by using an appropriate verbs and also the appropriate activity to the students. And um, this uh, learning domain will help us uh, to plan to select and to design the best learning we want to provide in our face-to-face -face classroom or even in our online training so as we can see here all right as we can see here when we master our cognitive psychomotor and factive i share with you there are three learning domains there are three learning uh, design learning experience i think you can only focus in your next class this is a very simplest one that i can share with you number one create inquiry based learning create more questions create more reflections create more academic discourse to make sure that the inquiry based learning can enhance their critical thinking capability so start with questionings you also can ask them the open-ended question you can ask them a reflection as what i did to you uh, in my mentimeter i ask you a quick simple questions i ask you two simple questions and how does you use uh, and how does i use the inquiry learning to make to, to to diagnose my student understanding so the inquiry based learning is very powerful strategy that we can use in our teaching and learning all right but as an educators we need to use uh, we need to uh, uh, be mindful when we ask them a question. Ask them a question that, we, that you uh, ask, ask a good question, and, and, that, and inshallah, they will give you a good feedback. And um, Saji, 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 you share when I conduct my inquiry based uh, learning, uh, I always them ask them a questions. I always ask them uh, a feedback, and I will share with you how do I conduct this inquiry based learning in the classroom, and also how can this, and you can see the student interact and also the student uh, share their their knowledge with me. Uh, uh, after this, I will show you the the, the examples, and the second element is the scaffolding all right so i think that 
this is a this is a, the, the the second uh, very important scaffolding. Somehow, riding as indicators, uh, we also uh, in the grey area. Kadang-kadang kita nak scaffold, tapi tiba-tiba dia jadi spoon feeding. Alright, so mula-mula tu inisiatif kita macam okay, I try to scaffold my student. Uh, I I want to make sure that I I I I apa I can uh, <coughs> I can mold my student through the scaffolding technique, but lama-lama dia jadi macam spoon feeding because of the in, uh, because of the student interaction the student gesture in the classroom and what not so this is this is very important all right and how does uh, we as educators try to make sure that we can provide an active active learning also the adaptive learning to create a dynamic environment in the classroom so this is at the three important element when we conduct our face to face or online classroom this is uh, three play important role. I think that there are many more but I try to highlight the three best that I practicing in my teaching and learning. All right. All right. So the reason why I highlight inquiry based learning, scaffolded, active and also the adaptive learning because of human have a two dimensions of cognitions. Okay, manusia ni secara, secara, secara umumnya ada dua uh, ada dua cognition dimension yang yang berada pada 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 pelajar-pelajar kita even us even kita sekalipun dimension yang pertama <coughs> knowledge about cognitions maksudnya kita belajar untuk kita memahami ataupun mengetahui so most mostly when we talk about the knowledge about cognition biasanya ilmu-ilmu itu bersifat declarative procedural dan juga conditional so meaning that perkara-perkara uh, yang perlu kita tahu membolehkan kita untuk melakukan sesuatu alright but somehow or other declarative procedural and also conditional knowledge if you are not practicing the knowledge you are become you will become incompetent so meaning that kadang-kadang saya bagi satu contohlah kadang-kadang uh, contohnya lah uh, seorang tukang kayu <coughs> alright seorang tukang kayu alright seki uh, kalau dia menukang hampir 30 tahun dia menukang Alright, dia dia carpenter, dia menggunakan dan sebagainya. The, he use the declarative knowledge, procedural knowledge and conditional knowledge. I assure you, if he break six month, three to six month, all the declarative knowledge, procedural knowledge on, on, and conditional knowledge akan merosot. So meaning that knowledge itu perlu di perlu diamalkan. So meaning that as a human, we have that kind of tendency. Saya bagi contohlah, kalau misalnya katalah uh, student, uh, misalnya katalah pesara-pesara yang bawa balik daripada PhD kan, I think that most of you, you are expert on using, for example lah, Mendeley or SSTI. But after you finish your PhD, you are not using that that tools. So you, 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 you bear with me. Some of the some of the techniques, some of the procedure might be might be uh, forgotten, and also you need to refresh back. That that's the knowledge about cognition. It, uh, it's, uh, the, there is something that you need to to always polish yourself. But the another dimension of knowledge is the knowledge of regulation of cognitions, meaning that you regulate the knowledge. Dah tahu ilmu tersebut and how you want to use it dan bukan saja how to use it by menggunakan ia sepanjang masa and the, the ilmu can be lasting, the ilmu akan melekat dalam kepala kita lah so there are two dimensions, sebab itu kalau pelajar sekalipun ada dua, uh, kita boleh lihat pelajar-pelajar ni kepada dua dimensi yang pertama, dia belajar knowledge itu hanya untuk belajar yang kedua, dia belajar knowledge itu untuk regulate ataupun digunakan pada masa akan datang dan bila kita kata pada masa akan datang, dia akan menggunakan ilmu itu untuk kegunaan harian dia so that's two, uh, when we talk about the brain, that's the brain capability Alright, so that's the reason why the brain capability play an important role to make sure that we can create a good learning experience. Whether you want to create the 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 learning experience just focus on the declarative procedural or conditional knowledge, or I want to provide the students something that really really exciting. Also, I want to engage the students, meaning that I want to have the kind of regulation of cognition. So sebab tu dalam dalam kita membina bahan dan sebagainya, kita kena jelas dengan dua perkara ini. Nak bagi maklumat sahaja kah ataupun we want them to regulate the knowledge. Alright. And yes, when we talk about um, uh, the knowledge, alright, we need to have the ability to curate the learning. And 
the to, to curate the learning is not that easy because of it takes some uh, effort and experience and of course yes uh, as educators we need to master our pedagogical approach um, i give you one example for you item for example i think that the last uh, training that you got is from kursus asas pengajaran to learn about pedagogy technology and assessment and after that after you get your confirmation uh, going your kursus asas pengajaran or non uh, or now we known as a higher learning higher teaching and learning high tell okay uh, you are not you are not getting any uh, training related to the pedagogy unless if you are if you are the patient educators who love teaching and learning so we can see that there's a gap uh, there's a gap here because of some of the lecturers only get the training uh, three years after and after that there is no training for example macam saya lah saya dah mengajar 17 uh, dah mengajar 12 tahun 13 tahun saya dapat saya punya uh, first training on pedagogy uh, pada uh, pada tiga tahun yang pertama and after that lagi yang selebihnya tu i not uh, upgrading myself i not doing my uh, reskilling up to dan sebagainya i might be left behind because of i think that sebab tu kadang-kadang rata-rata mu sudah pencara merasakan bahawa pedagogi yang digunakan itu tidak berkesan kerana mereka masih lagi menggunakan pedagogi yang sama so that's the reason why we need to learn relearn and unlearn and how we want to upskill reskill and retool ourselves every year so when we talk about teaching alini there is some there is there is uh, there is make so dynamic benda akan berubah-ubah dan uh, ianya akan sentiasa ada teknologi-teknologi baru when we talk about the pedagogy so how we as educators take the responsibility to make sure that we upskill ourselves and we try to make sure that we can cater all of the, the learning needs and uh, when we talk about the not about, about the two days uh, the way of teaching and learning yes they are more inclined into the constructivist learning approach all right so meaning that student not only want to be um uh, not, not only want to have the uh, the experience of um what we call uh having a lecture in the classroom but they need to construct a meaning in the classroom so we need to provide them with the engaging activity in the classroom so the constructivist learning meaning that the student can use their previous knowledge but you as uh, educators or as uh, facilitators provide them with the new learning experience and how does the student use the previous and also the new knowledge and constructing their meaning of knowledge so that's what we call as a constructivism and as a educators uh, I think that this is something that we need to look at seriously. How do we repackaging our learning? Because of we are facing a different student almost every semester. We are facing different generation at every semester. And we also uh, facing the different uh, needs of the student at every semester. And how does you repackaging your learning to make your, le your learning more interesting? And when we talk about the repackaging of learning, that's the reason why when you uh, get your marks, you analyze your mark and you should do your intervention. This is how you can repackage your learning. And no doubt, uh, uh, Tuan Tuan dan Puan Puan, uh, visual learning experience is something very important now. Because of why? Because of the challenge uh, more critical when we are conducting the webinar because of what we need to give them kind of experience the best experience that we can provide to them is visual so you can use the video you can use the images you can use anything just to get the student attentions and to make sure that the student can benefit your session this is how I think that when we talk about the learning experience, I think that at the first be the beginning when we start our open and distant learning, we are too focused on the technology for the first two weeks. But and after that, we realize that when I already master the technology, what is the best pedagogy, pedagogy that I should provide to the student and next, what is the best learning experience I want to provide to them. So visual is one of the solution of it. And when we talk about uh the dimension of learning in creating a great learning experience uh 
scalable and engagement is the is 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 at high stakes because of what um, scalable but not engaging also cannot create a good learning experience. So meaning that we want to make sure that instead of thinking on scalable, why don't you think that I need to design my learning that engage with the students? So when we talk about teaching and learning, it's not a, pra a, a general practice, but it must be set by the content driven. So that's the reason why Tuan Tuan Dan Puan, I do understand that uh, when you conduct your online training at the beginning, your start, your, uh, your online training. Saya dapatlah macam-macam cerita pasal online ni because of what? Um, ada yang mengajar tiga jam straight online training. Ada yang mengajar dua uh, jam. Ada yang mengajar tak sampai lima minit pun. So, uh, I think that uh, this is uh, impacted because of how does you design your learning. Alright, so is it necessary, necessary for us to uh, sit in front on our notebook and conduct our teaching and learning for three hours just having a lectures? Is it, uh, is it effective enough? Is it efficient enough? Is it good enough? Or how can I design maybe one hour less of teaching lectures but I put more time on the activity with the students? So these are the things that we need to to be uh, we need to, to uh, we need to think about it and also we need to reflect ourselves. All right. So, uh, what is creating learning content and experience? When we talk about creating a learning content and experience, we talk about it's a process of selection, designing and sharing the learning experience. So, maka betul lah tadi waktu kita buat Mentimeter tadi tu, ramai yang tadi share pasal designing, selecting dan juga tadi saya tak, tak, tak saya, I'm not so sure whether sharing tu ada ke tidak. Tetapi yang paling dominant tadi yang kita nampak tadi adalah selecting and designing. So uh, when we when uh, when do when we do our teaching and learning to make sure that we can give them a context in learning, we as educator we need to focus on curating. We need to create our we need to curate our bahan bahan because of why because of there are four things we need to look at. Number one is multiple. So meaning that as educators, when we try to creating our materials, we do understand that we can find many content or many resources from multiple data. Okay, so meaning that you can you can get a thousand even. Alright, kadang-kadang nak mengajar tu satu jam je, tetapi the way you look uh, all the multiple sources to maybe 1,000, 100 or even uh, maybe 20 or 30 to make sure that bila masuk kelas tu you are be ready. But the question is how to make sure that we can curate the best. And the number two is when we have all the multiple data, how can you, how you able to filter your data? Find the relevant data or information. So I think that kadang-kadang uh, we need to be very mindful. Kadang-kadang bila kita bagi tugasan pada pelajar-pelajar, kita selalu bagi resources ataupun bahan-bahan ataupun pautan-pautan yang ber, yang boleh digunakan oleh pelajar-pelajar. And we need to make sure that when we give all the pautan, hyperlink and whatnot, it must be something that relevant with the information. Alright. And number three is uh, when we talk about the content creation, it's all about sharing. That's the reason why um, sharing play an important role. Some said that sharing is caring. Yes, uh, with the global, uh, with the uh, the globalization nowadays, uh, sharing play an important role. But we have to be careful. We have to be careful with the copy copyright infringements to make sure that uh, if you are using uh, other resources and how you uh, use that resources it, uh, ethically and to ensure that you don't have to face the copyright issue for in future. And how does you put value in your content and how does the content can be valuable to the students and how does the content can spark uh, the student uh, thinking and also to make sure that they can engage. All right, so that's the reason, uh, that's the four elements that's very important when we curate learning content and experience. I think that most of the, uh, I think that when we as educators, before we, uh, 
we designing our lecture notes i think that we have gone through all this process to make sure that at the end of the day i can provide the best for my students meaning that as an educators you need to customize your learning that's the reason why personalized take place and also the personalized very important there so um I I'm not sure whether uh, kalau ada juga lah yang masih lagi menggunakan nota-nota yang yang apa yang digunakan bertahun-tahun but I do agree that um, all the notes all the learning materials can be upgraded time to time to make sure the relevancy of the learning materials all right so uh the reason why uh, we uh, so uh, look into the content creation and we believe that it can enhance the learning strategy and experience because of the number one is we can aggregate meaningful content all right so we want to aggregate the meaningful content that's the reason why um, content creations um, can uh, change the learning behavior and how we as educators make it into context and how does the learning can be a continuum and I think that when we talk about the learning as a continuum, for example, contohlah tuan-tuan dan puan-puan, ya, uh, when we do our reading, somehow or rather, we want to know better and we extend our reading. So, meaning that when we when you try to extend your reading and your resources and your understanding uh, towards uh, on that specific topics, meaning that you are trying to create the continuum of learning and you want to make sure that at the end of the day, you understand what you want to learn and this is very uh, very good meaning that the but the the need the educators uh, realize the important and aware the importance of learning as a continuum and yes uh, when uh, we use the content creation we want to have that kind of feedback through the learning analytics uh, through the content creation also we can see the pattern and trend uh, of the content how does it relevance how does it validates and how does it can give students uh, some more further information about uh, related topics and how uh, we can use that also to make sure that uh, the students not only use uh, just for the sake of uh, getting marks but also use that to make sure that they can use the learning uh, and also to regulate the learning for their for their life okay and um yes uh, when we talk about uh the creation of learning uh, we do agree that um, we need to understand what is the best model of the creation of learning so um i want to share with you here this is the model of creation uh, the, the, the model of creations when we talk about how can i as educators can able to curate and how can I transfer my curation knowledge to the learners and allow the learners also can have that skill set. All right. So uh, as educators, uh, if you can see at the the, the model here is uh, when we do uh, when we start creating our uh, curating our uh, learning experience, there are four skill set we need uh, are required for us to be mastered number one is how good we articulate curate optimize and see the relevancy of the content and then we start to curate but somehow or rather they need some kind of analysis evaluation and synthesis process maybe whether in the thematic or contextual analysis to make sure that from all the multiple source of data you can reduce and also you can find the relevant one so that's the reason why as educators our biggest issue and challenge is we have a lot of data but we cannot but we have some kind of oh, uh, kind of uh unable uh, we can have or rather, uh, kekurangan in terms of managing our data pesyari-pesyari somehow or rather, we have a lot of data but we kita tak pandai nak menguruskan data so with the curation uh with, with this curation model uh, can allow you how we how you can find the best data by having finding tagging rating commenting updating also contextualizing 
And sebab apa saya rasa saya katakan bahawa curation ini penting pada peringkat persyarah-persyarah ataupun educators because of while you complete your curating and after that you will share the knowledge with the students. So meaning that the student will get uh, the information from you from that uh, that the information that so uh, that rivals valid and also have a full of integrity. So when you complete your uh, when you when you die when you complete with your curation process and after that you will share with your students but normally when when we talk about sharing content curation have a multiple channel of content creations all right so meaning that you can share your content through your linkedin your youtube facebook google site twitter instagram blog podcast newsletter and whatnot because of what because the student can get access from these multiple channels and the reason why uh, i mentioned uh, we need to transfer this knowledge because of when because of the student will do the assignment they also need that kind of skill set so but the skill set need, need to be developed so that's the reason why uh, when we want to transfer the knowledge and skill set number one is we need to be very focused what are the skill set that we want to achieve encourage sociability because of through sociability then you can have a discourse and try to create culture because of i think that most of our students uh, have kind of the, the honesty in assessment so nanti nanti saya akan bincangkan juga um, how does uh, we we want to create the culture that they use all the information but uh, at the same time aware on the ethics and also when they have the culture they socialize to have a discourse they focus on the content that they want to look at then they can become the explorator of knowledge so this is our the transfer knowledge we hope that we can give the students and we believe that in this at this kind of point most of the students are using online or open digital learning this skill set need to be transferred to the student but you as educators need to be mastered all right okay so um, there's a question before I go forward Nampaknya macam saya yang cakap ni Dia ada tak soalan-soalan yang ingin ditanya? Alright, sebelum I go further Alright You can unmute your your apa, your You can unmute and ask me a question Or you can throw your question at the chat box Alright, so nampak gaya participant Ada lebih kurang 250 orang Dekat dalam uh, Google Meet uh, But I not so sure on the streaming How many of them Alright, so maybe mungkin juga boleh bantu yang main rakan-rakan dekat streaming nak ada soalan tu mungkin boleh uh, sharekan di sini lah. Alright, so ada soalan nak tanya sebelum I go further. Alright, is it okay? Is it fine? Alright, okay. Kalau ada uh, maklum dengan ni saya, sebab saya akan tengok uh, chat box dengan uh, I allow you to unmute lah insyaAllah. Alright. Alright, so uh, Saja je saya nak kongsikan dengan dengan tuan-tuan dan puan-puan uh, about the circle of life we as a educators when we talk about uh, our profession as a educators. Um, yes, as a educators, um, I think that we need to understand the educational philosophy. We need to master our pedagogical approach, theory, methodology. Uh, uh, we try to understand the range of consumption about the learning environments and whatnot. But I think that when we talk about the teaching cycle, we as educators, this is our teaching cycle. We do always have our preparations. We want we want to conduct our teaching. We have our post teaching reflections, and we use the professional development to upskilling and enhance ourselves time by time. And no doubt. Uh, when we talk about the teaching life cycles, it's not only talking about you at your classroom, but also we talk as a program academic as a whole. So meaning that, kalau kita mengajar contohnya subjek A, B, C, 1, 2, 3, it's not about your courses. You need, you need to understand at the top, at the top to bottom. You need to understand your program. When you understand your program, and then you can do better on your courses. And Yes, uh, when we talk about um, as educators, we have all of these uh, functions and how we translate our knowledge by having a guidance 
we we do the representation and visualization and we share with the students all right so salam doctor how long it will take uh, to master the creation skill based on your experience what it takes it literate versus it illiterate okay uh it's a good question from uh professor dr mazida putih um, okay uh, from that uh, from doctor i give you my experience okay um i start doing my blogging when i do my degree at semester two all right um i do realize that because of i have the weaknesses in terms of uh, writing skill so what i did here is sebab dah tak pandai sebab saya tak pandai nak, uh, nak menulis tu tak berapa bagus especially on uh, in english what i what i what i did here what i did here is i bila saya dapat bahan I curate, I curate, I curate. So meaning that daripada lama tu proses yang saya buat ni. Uh, nanti saya akan jawab juga soalan tu nanti. Uh, lama proses yang saya ambil. So, the reason why kerana I do believe that um, when, tapi waktu tu saya tak tahu lah yang saya tengah curate. Tapi uh, yang saya tahu adalah bila saya dapat bahan, saya suka simpan dekat dalam uh, Google site, Google, Google site ataupun blogspot. So saya sim suka simpan dalam tu. So bila saya dapat bahan-bahan saya simpan, saya simpan, saya simpan. So rupanya saya tak saya tak saya tak tak tak, tak perasan rupanya apa yang saya, saya, saya yang saya sedang lakukan adalah create creating. So saya ambil bahan orang, saya curate, saya ambil bahan orang, saya curate. Lepas itu saya nak guna, saya baca-baca dan saya ambil the most important element. Dan benda ni berlaku sehingga lah sam sampai saya buat saya punya master, PhD dan sehingga sekarang. Meaning that lama proses tu lama because of what uh, based on my self reflections rupa-rupanya when i do a creation knowledge ada tiga benda yang saya mahir yang pertama is i able my um, i good on my analytical thinking so meaning that because of i go through a lot of resources and i i know what is the best resources or not the best resources so uh, my analytical thinking become better number two is i improve my writing skills or even my uh, my communication skill because of I go through a lot of readings and number three I enhance my critical thinking and problem solving skills so kalau you tanya saya whether it was uh, is it uh, literate or not illiterate is is depending on the individual but I, I do believe that if you always do the creation i think that within six months to one year you can master but you need to have a consistent practice in your profession uh, in your teaching and learning so meaning that kena buat selalu if you tak buat selalu so the the, the skill set is not uh, it's not is that easy to master because of what Uh, the content creation is the process where you select and also you choose the best the next level is to to become the content creator so when i when we talk about the curating curating ni orang kata asas sahaja all right asas sahaja maksudnya you curate bahan, bahan orang dan sebagainya but sampai bila you nak curate bahan orang you need to create your own content so when you master on creating your creating uh, curating uh, content dah master yang itu and when you start realize and it becomes uh, dia akan jadi secara semula jadi you do understand okay this is a, is about time for me to curate my own content based on my previous reading all right so i think that the more you practice you will get more Uh, competence and you can master the skill set. So kalau Prof uh, Madia Dr. Mazida Putih, I think that Prof Dr. Mazida Putih ni selalu follow saya punya Facebook page ni. Kalau you consistent within this six months, tak payah six months kot, we as educators lagi cepat kot. If you are consistent within three months to six months, you can become a good creator, uh, you can become a skillful in this particular of creating the 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 content all right all right so and dan sama orang dengan kadang-kadang you tak realize sebenarnya you are good at it i do believe that creating ni semua orang mahir sebenarnya just a matter of kadang-kadang you tak tak realize eh bila doktor samsu cakap ni eh macam eh aku macam dah pernah buat tapi kenapa tak realize because of what because of you are stagnant sebab you banyak curate tapi you tak create the content so meaning that when i share with you the model of curating sebenarnya the next step 
hire is to create the content. So the create content itu nanti yang akan menggunakan knowledge yang you dah ataupun yang you dah master sebelum ni. Alright, salam doktor. Is creating almost similar with the teaching plan? Um, when we talk about similar, it's not uh, nak kata similar tu tak juga but in the process of our lesson plan. Nanti saya akan tunjukkan dengan uh, Siti Syahmimi Omar nanti ya. Eh. Alright. And the reason why saya kata kenapa uh, content creation is very important because of we have to agree that in Malaysia for example, uh, I give you in the context of uh, UITM library, we have a hundred thousand resources and most of the resources is open educational resources which is you can access freely without paying any cents so uh, just just a matter of do you realize or not and the student also can get benefit from these resources and for your information the Pita library have about a hundred thousands of resources tak salah saya lebih kurang dalam 20,000 Eh, tak salah saya lebih kurang uh, puluhan ribu bahan-bahan uh, education resources yang boleh diakses secara percuma and this is about time for the student to use all the all the education resources because of what? I got the report from the PITA the usage of OER four times increasing compared before COVID so meaning that the educational the, the resources is reachable but how we how we as a educators and how they as a student can curate all the information and and select the best for them and uh, we do believe that uh, the learning not only limited using the open educational resources but also you can learn through social media you can ask the uncle youtube you can ask the pakci googles you can ask the anti yahoo and every each of them can give you a million or trillion answer for you but again how you curate the information and as i as i mentioned before we talk about the web collaboration resources we have all the wikis we have all the blogs we have all the documentation but we need to be very mindful because of all the web collaboration resources have an issue on the credibility and integrity again need the creation knowledge on how to select the best materials for their teaching and learning and again no doubt having all the technology we cannot left our human interaction or human resources in which facilitators educators in the institution subject matters in the university or faculty student peers play an important role to give a support so meaning that we as educators we as uh, as we know that we are depending on with all the technology don't left behind that we have a human we need to interact and we need to use them more uh, instead of the technology we use the technology to support and human to complement to make sure that we can create a good learning experience all right so at the left uh, at the right side these are the diagram the simple diagram that you can simulate but uh, this diagram talking about task resources and support nanti saya akan terjemahkan dalam bentuk lesson plan yang saya akan tunjukkan kepada tuan-tuan sekejap saja nanti all right all right so um, as an educators or even students uh, when we talk about learning experience or assessment now we are adapting a new culture of learning all right so new culture of learning um, as i mentioned before the technology already in a, in place but we should emphasize on the value based education or humanistic approach yang itu yang kita tak nak ketinggalan so meaning that dalam kesibukan kita mengajar learning outcome dan kesibukan kita memastikan pelajar-pelajar siap dan sebagainya elemen-elemen kemanusiaan elemen-elemen value elemen-elemen yang berkaitan dengan manusiawi ini perlu juga diberi perhatian kerana mereka-mereka ini juga adalah manusia sama seperti kita so meaning that with the challenge of uh, open distance learning with the challenge of online learning with the challenge of the current situation of learning now 
how we do, how we as educators try to adapt slowly but surely and how we can be focused on the content or on the context you want to deliver to the students so meaning that kalau saya ada 3 jam pengajar 3 jam uh, waktu pengkuliahan saya how does can i be focused on the 3 hours and facilitate them and provide them a good learning experience and again macam saya kata kepada pada tadi uh, curator to explorator social learning and changing learning culture adalah satu perkara yang tidak lagi boleh dapat dielakkan i think that uh, as a hero uh, as a hero uh, historical uh, uh, view uh, in education landscape i think that uh, uh, kalau saya bagi dalam konteks UITM ataupun di mana-mana universiti yang join this workshop i think that we have been introduced with the online teaching and learning for quite sometimes but there is no um, impact factor that allow us to move and to shift secara drastik as what we are now and dalam masa tempoh beberapa tahun ni we are too com uh, we are too um orang kata apa we are too comfort with our normal practice and we think that the online learning just um, just something that uh, yes it's important but something uh, but not not now you are kata kata not now not for a time being uh, maybe later uh, i will think about it that the mungkin perkataan-perkataan itu yang akan keluar kan uh, daripada mulut kita even saya sendiri pun but when the covid-19 berlaku pada kita and we start realize that eh secara tak langsung kita as educators dalam suka tak suka dalam dalam kita uh, uh, bersedia tak bersedia we need to change our culture and immediately um, daripada kita dulu kita macam rasa tak boleh buat now kita rasa dah boleh buat dah uh, dulu kita rasa macam banyak sangat negative side but when we go through the process with, with the hand holding I do believe all of you attend all the webinar and belajar zoom lah belajar mix lah you belajar everything to make sure that you want to give uh, a good experience in the classroom it's a good initiative from all of us I think that most of the university have uh, have uh, what we kata uh, put their continuous effort to make sure that uh, we can help all the educators even we share all the information then sebelum ni pun i do believe that contoh nombor puan we don't have that kind of sharing yang mana um, semua webinar boleh masuk uh, universiti boleh masuk tak hari ni kalau kita, kalau kita buka webinar uh, ramai kawan-kawan daripada 20 UA join us kawan-kawan uh, daripada politeknik kawan-kawan daripada sekolah menengah sekolah rendah preschool join the workshop they don't, they don't care about the content anymore they just want to fill in their 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 their, their knowledge and to understand how to uh, give the student the good environment and how can i help the students so meaning that we can break we can break the 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 the, the, the treasure culture and adapt the new culture okay by dr andre Hussein, what humanistic values for you dr samsos humanistic values is where is i letak satu je tadi okay i letak tadi negotiation uh, skill satu tetapi nanti saya akan sharekan kepada tuan-tuan uh, dan puan ada satu lagi values yang kita perlu uh, bawa dalam kita punya teaching and learning because of I think that instead of giving them a content put a values and ethics is very important uh, for the students all right for me the humanistic values is when you or even us can uh, kata apa, uh, can uh, uh, negotiate can talk in harmony and also uh, to make sure that uh, we understand each other and we complement each other all right so this is how we as a educators and the student need to behave all right so when we talk about adapting a new culture of learning all right uh, learning experience cannot be happen if this happen the academic honesty all right so the learning experience and assessment cannot be great if this happen meaning that uh, we have the plagiarism we have the fabric uh, fabrication deceptions all right yes empathy is the one empathy i can put at, at the top notch okay number one all right so plagiarism 
fabrication, deception and cheating is the most common academic dishonesty can be happen in our institutions. Tuan-tuan dan perempuan, cubalah bayangkan when the student in the campus also can have this kind of scenario even more challenging when we conduct our online training or online uh, teaching. So meaning that the plagiarism, fabrication, deception and cheating is always can be happen uh, whether in face to face or even though in the online teaching and learning or open distance learning. Uh, this is something that we cannot run away, just a matter of we as uh, educators can reduce the numbers of uh, the, the numbers of percentage of academic dishonesty with maybe a few strategies. Okay, so that's the reason why orang tanya saya, boleh ke Dr. Samsul, plagiarism, fabrication, deception ni and cheating, we, kita kata-kata zero lah kata-kata, tak, tak akan berlaku dekat universiti, tak akan berlaku di mana-mana. I cannot, I cannot give you that, cannot be happen. It can be happen, but we can reduce. Alright, kalau nak kata hilangkan dia secara seratus peratus, it's a bit difficult because of at the end of the day, um, it goes back to the individual. So that's the reason why uh, to overcome this issue, we need to make sure that I want to bring you the concepts of adab dan amanah. Alright, so sama juga macam kita pada hari ini, all the educators, maybe most of us now work from home and maybe macam hari ni saya saya work from office. But whatever uh, places that you are working, if you have your amanah, you will do your part then you will do your job uh, in the good manner, all right? And same goes with adapt. So adapt need to be instilled because of at the end of the day, we want to create a future khalifa, a future leader. So meaning that if the students or, or if the educators have adapt and amanah and they know that they are the khalifa, I do believe that plagiarism, fabrication, deception and cheating can be reduced but the individual itself need to, to realize this and need to change themselves and I always talk to my students um, somehow or other if you are good in your marks but without having adab or abana you are you you cannot you 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 are you tak kemana mana pun you are, you you are not proven me anything you are not proven me anything so I think that most of the students or even we as educators we need to handhold the adab and amana become the great khalifa because of what? Because of we as educators, we will create a more khalifa for future and we want all the khalifa have this kind of attributes. All right. So I think that uh, the reason why I cannot I can adapt to Antona um, when we do, I think that uh, when I conduct my online training almost 10 weeks, online online training, tak kira training, webinar dengan pesyarah ataupun dengan pelajar, I start realize that I lose on the human contextual. So when 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 uh, what what to bila? Biasanya waktu kita buat webinar gunalah Google Meet and whatnot. Kadang-kadang kita realize all of our friends turn on turn off their videos. So dekat situ je kita dah hilang dah satu human interactions. And uh, dan kita dan uh, bila kita dan dan I, I do worry that um, makin lama kita akan rasa macam uh, semakin jauh dengan dengan apa dengan dengan uh, dengan dengan touch touch tersebut. So what I did with my student is, okay students, what I want to do with you is, you need to open your video, and then I want to see your face for maybe for one hour or two hours. I just want to see to, to, to see your face. Sebab saya nak ada that kind of human interactions, and uh, that that's the thing. Alright, so kadang-kadang I think that um, bila saya baru-baru ni saya buat seminar dengan webinar dengan uh, peserta daripada Innovative Assessment for Higher Education. Saya memang paksa mereka untuk buat, uh, untuk buka video, to, 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 to turn on the video just to see on their facial expression saja. because of kita tak nampak dia macam mana, kita tak tak tahu body language dia macam mana sebagainya but the facial tu akan bagi saya sedikit kelegaan when I conduct the webinar. Alright, so never mind tak apa, yang hari ni tak apalah because of yang ini tak ada engagement. Alright, yang ini tak ada engagement tak apa, don't worry, okay. Tapi I give you some kind of um, tips ataupun my experience. Kalau kalau boleh, kalau boleh tuan-tuan dan perempuan, when you conduct your teaching, let the student to turn on their, their video. 
I, I want you to feel that kind of experience ada engagement di situ. Alright, so kalau mass lecture macam ni tak apa uh, sebab tak banyak engagement yang berlaku. But with the students, I do encourage you let the student to turn on. Kalau dia tak boleh ada masalah dengan bandwidth, then kita aware lah. Alright. Okay, and yes, um, when when uh, when we talk about the creation of uh, great learning experience assessment, macam saya katakan tadi, we put ethics, uh, when we talk about ethics, it's a system of moral values or rules or principles of the human behavior. So meaning that, um, dalam kita nak conduct our class, to make sure that the learning experience can be increased, to make sure that the assessment can be done uh, in the pro, in the in the good manner without having the academic dishonesty, we need to instill three component. Number one is work relations. So meaning that uh, we, we we need meaning that they know that they know and then they understand the relation with the co partner or with the distribution work group or community in the work setting. Work relationships. So whatever they did, whatever they do is something that related with the institution, something that related, related to the university, uh, related to the faculty, and also related to their peers. Okay. And um, and uh, give them some kind of responsibility. All right. Um, somehow or other, uh, we need to prescribe in the scopes or item of reference. Kadang-kadang pelajar-pelajar -kadang, uh, ni because of their young learners. Ada benda-benda tu memang kita kena prescribe untuk mereka supaya mereka faham apa yang mereka perlu lakukan dan nombor tiga yang paling akhir sekali integrity, level of honesty. So level level of honesty inilah sangat-sangat yang perlu dilihat and how do we look the student can carry out the honesty and the integrity along the process of teaching and learning. Alright, okay. Um, Alright, okay. Generasi strawberry is very fragile. Adab is rare this day. Betul. Generasi sekarang, uh, I think that when it comes to adab, I, I bagi one example lah tuan-tuan dan perempuan. Even though they give us some kind of email pun kadang-kadang uh, as attached. Yeah, so simple as that. So I think that benda-benda yang macam ni yang kita kena selalu keep, uh, kena selalu ingatkan mereka dan kita kena mainkan peranan kita Uh, supaya adab dan amanah ini perlu di, sebab macam saya memang almost every when I before I start my class adab dan amanah adalah benda yang saya akan keep repeating uh, tell to the students and how I expect them to behave lah alright and how to create best learning culture for online learning insyaAllah kejap lagi saya akan tunjukkan alright and this connected just now most learners take for granted yes honesty yes most of the learners take for granted uh, We, we don't want them to take for granted. We want them to take this seriously because of what? Because of the educators put a lots of effort to develop the learning material, to, to, to facilitate them, to give them a good learning environment. The student and on the behalf of the student, they need to appreciate uh, what we uh, do for them. All right. All right. Assalamualaikum doktor, what are the component of the skill set? How to develop the talent amongst learners and measure skill set acquired by them? So it refers back, uh, what kind of skill set they are you looking, uh, what, are you, what are the skill set that we are looking for? Uh, InsyaAllah, uh, Shaira, if you know what are the skill set, maybe I can discuss, we can discuss further on how to measure the skill set and what is the best skill set for them. All right. All right. And no doubt. Uh, when we talk, uh, when we talk about creation, we talk about uh, content creations. Assessment play important roles. Whatever, whatever you do is something must be related to the assessment. So uh, you just can only uh, create um, learning experience by having a good assessment. I give you an example. Contoh ya tuan-tuan dan puan. If you conduct a test, all right, the learning experience of test not as much as if you conduct a case study. That's the reason why uh, the traditional assessment such uh, standardized test and examination, we uh, they fall under passive assessment, meaning that then the assessment not required so much than the experience because of uh, that at, at, that, uh, at, at that at, uh, particular of time, they only need to memorize and remember the process. But if you want to bring the students towards on the learning experience, the assessment need to be dynamic. The assessment need uh, to do something re related to 
that enhance their skill set, especially when we talk about uh, when we talk about and and en 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 enhancing their cognitive, psychomotor, and also effective ability. So when we talk about the forward thinking assessment that cited from the Education 5.0 at UITM. The, we we want to reorient the assessment beyond the standardized test and examination. For your information, Tuan Tuan dan Puan Puan, um, the composition of assessment at UITM, we are still practicing 60-40. 60 is a passive assessment. Another 40 is uh, what we call active assessment. So when the COVID happened, all right, we don't have our sitting exam anymore. All right, there the, the major shift and changes happen at UITM. So meaning that within this semester and next semester, we can see that the, the, the reduction numbers of final assessment and the, the, the pressure start looking at the new potential of assessment is something that we are looking forward. All right, so that's the reason why when we start uh, talking about the education 4.0 at 2019 or, to, uh, or end of 2018, uh, we believe that when we talk about the forward thinking assessment, it must be based on the evidence-based and data-driven assessment. Because of what? Because of we want to assess students, we want to understand students not only from grade but also the learning analytic can provide us some information how we can diagnose, how we can predict and also how we can describe the student as an individual, as a per cohort or as a per program. All right. And this is how when the learning analytics provide us all the information so we can create a, new, a good learning experience and we start to collaborate with our stakeholder to create a good learning environment and to create a good learning experience to the students. But however, to make sure this can be successful happen in our university, we need to understand that we need to clarify, we need to clear the intention of assessment we need to create a positive culture. There is no anymore talk, we're talking about punishments. We are talking about to create positive culture, to create positive uh, opportunity, to create more space uh, for the educators and students to collaborate and also to uh, contribute. That's the reason why, as always, I, I mentioned at the beginning of the slide, I talk about the human base, value base, people principles, I put more human element here to, because of what? Because of we are left behind and we kita jarang bercerita tentang human uh, as for now, kita banyak bercerita tentang technology. So that's, that's, that's made me worry because of uh, kalau kita perasan, kita banyak sangat kita pasal technology but somehow orang ada kita lupa dan kita kadang-kadang tak ingat elemen-elemen uh, manusia ini perlu diketengahkan juga. Alright? Okay, and um, yes, we do agree that the emerging of technology and the ecosystem akan memberikan suasana yang lebih baik kepada kita. And uh, I do believe that uh, as for now, apa yang kita sedang buat adalah we try to give them that kind of assessment on demand, adaptive assessment and dan kita nak belajar-belajar boleh aktif dengan learning dan pada masa yang sama juga kita berusaha sebaik mungkin to make sure that the student also need to be very independent on themselves. So, inilah masanya untuk melihat sama ada pelajar kita mampu atau tidak belajar secara self-directed but to make sure that they can learn uh, through self-directed learning approach, they also need to, we as educators need to design the best activity for them lah. Alright. Alright, uh, daripada Jurita Nisman, especially during the ODL COVID-19, uh, on the part of university itself and lecturers themselves, could you suggest clear cut strategy to reduce academic dehonesty that you apply and we can use in future because the tendency to cheat so high on ODL, for example, Kod Hawana, alright, turn it into maybe. Yes, betul. Memang ini perkara yang kita lihat sekarang. Uh, Jurita Usman, uh, bila kita buat online learning ini, empat uh, elemen yang saya kongsikan tadi itulah perkara yang kita sedang lihat dan ini juga perkara yang kita senang teliti dan ini juga perkara yang kita nak pastikan power for the next semester or now kita boleh reduce the number of dishonesty. 
Okay, yes, they only still need to be nurtured, all right, betul? Not to be nurtured, but somehow rather we need the policy to enforce, uh, to make sure that um, they are, kena, macam, macam kena hidup berperaturan lah, baru boleh nurtured benda tu kan. So I think that the policy also, uh, kita sedang review our policy, uh, also we look on that particular of uh, uh, areas, all right? Forcing gambar regulation, betul? Insya Allah. Okay, how about the trust? Also can, ya betul, trust juga. Okay, banyak ni komen. <laughs> okay, asalkan doktor bagaimana kita nak menepis komen negatif di social media berhubung impak negatif ODL. Alright, pada masa yang sama juga kita boleh penjabaran nanti. Okay, betul tuan-tuan, betul, uh, betul uh, kepada tuan-tuan dan perempuan. Uh, I think that uh, kita mungkin banyak melihat, uh, kita mungkin banyak melihat daripada perspektif uh, pelajar Kita jarang-jarang melihat daripada perspektif uh, pensyarah itu sendiri Even though pensyarah itu juga ada ada masalah, ada ada apa, ada ada uh, kebimbangan, kerisauan ataupun They have their own, uh, kata apa, difficulty uh, Cuma tinggal, we kita di pensyarah, kita ni professional, we are not uh, apa, posting something bad in the in the social media and what not Alright, but um, these are the things juga yang yang uh, for for the UITM we are look forward on that. Kita juga melihat perkara itu yang sangat serius. Alright, dan uh, I do agree that uh, comment comment memang akan sentiasa ada. Just a matter of um, we as educator we will try to pick the best one and we want to overcome. Dan sebenarnya bila pelajar pelajar komen tu uh, kita kita ambil tetapi kita ambil dengan cara yang rasional lah. So uh, InsyaAllah, uh, if I want to share here, mungkin tak cukup masa nanti Alright, okay Alright Okay um, oh, Ada banyak, banyak banyak pendapat dan komen Cuma saya, saya memang appreciate all the comment ni Saya akan cuba baca sekejap lagi insyaAllah Alright, so uh, When we talk about creating great learning experience uh, Tuan-tuan dan perempuan The reason why kenapa I uh, the reason why kenapa I I share with you all this uh, di dimension because of as a educators as normal we have our input process and also output all right so our input here is we want to give the we want, we want to give the immersive and active learning experience all right but through assessment all right through assessment so meaning that we understand the value of assessment we use the variety of assessment as possible and we bring the contact in assessment and we provide them with a resources a good resources of learning but in the process is these are the challenge happen to us uh, and students uh, somehow rather we can have a mismatching here between uh, lectures and students and what we try to do is as educators in our part we try to our best to make sure that we can provide them with the effective and efficient feedback we try to simulate our best teaching also and also we want to give them effective assessment to support the student developments i think that as educators memang tak salah sebenarnya when we talk when we think on what how can i fill up and how how can i ensure that the skill set can be can be uh, how, how i can ensure that the student get the skill set itu memang tak salah sebab itu yang kita selalu fikirkan bila kita masuk kelas bila kita assess the students all right but always have a mismatching with the students because of the students and have a different uh, have a different uh, things that they are, they are looking at but that's the reason why I said that the negotiation, the clarity of purpose, uh, the purpose-centered value play an important role to 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 make things more calmer and to make things uh, to get uh, some kind of agreement uh, between each other. All right. All right. Okay. And then uh, yes, as usual, the student gains and learning outcome. And the student, macam saya katakan tadi tuan-tuan dan perempuan If you quote from the Albert Einstein, dia ada cakap uh, Not everything uh, can be count and not uh, yang kita count to is everything So meaning that um, ada benda yang kita boleh ukur, ada benda yang kita tak, tidak boleh ukur So itu memang lumrah dalam 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 pendidikan, dalam education But bila, bila kita nak mengukur, we have to make sure that we can ukur Ataupun menilai pelajar-pelajar tu dengan mekanisme-mekanisme yang betul To make sure that bila kita mengukur ianya boleh menjel, menjel, menjelaskan Ataupun to show the, 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 the real performance of the students And that's the reason why uh, when we do all of this process The intervention, the attainment and the student profiling Give us some kind of indication how to improve ourselves also the students Alright, are we ready for the formative assessment? A good questions, are we ready or not? Uh, based on my survey, I have conducted a survey with uh, the UITM lecturers. It took about 10% populations. 
almost uh, 45% is ready. The rest is not ready. So this is something also need to be strategized uh, by Dr. Andrian. Uh, okay, so I did the, the survey. Okay, uh, I think that 45% saja yang ready, lebih kurang. Uh, the rest is not ready because of the lack of uh, uh, there are lack of uh, knowledge about it. Uh, they uh, they don't practice it dan sebagainya. Alright, so when we talk about the input process output, uh, sebenarnya when we talk about input process and output, the forward thinking assessment is all about analyzing, designing, executing. That, tapi pada masa yang sama sebenarnya to measure the quality of the whole system not only about the students but also assessing on the educators part assessing on the administrative part assessing on the program academic itself assessing on the university itself because of what because of we as a institution have a good intention we want to produce a good students who have the intellectuality physical physically strong, emotionally and spiritual and of course yes we want the student to become more holistic, uh, balanced students and also but to achieve holistic and balanced students every each of uh, initiative need to have the predetermined standards because of the predetermined standard will give us some indication how to improve our quality and at the end of the day yes we do agree that bila pelajar-pelajar dia masuk universiti, bila dia keluar we want them to employ but we need, before they can get employed, we need to provide them a good learning experience. We need get, to get them ready. And also we need to get, we need to ensure that the assessment that we've done is really, really can measure, is really, really portray the skill set of them. All right. So, so uh, i give you one example. Okay, saya nak tunjukkan satu contoh. Uh, let me show you the examples of ODL, assessment and library. Selama uh, daripada minggu ketiga hingga minggu ke sepuluh, how can I curate the knowledge, how can I use the assessment and how do student independently learn by themselves. Alright, I give you one example. Okay, tuan-tuan dan puan-puan. Uh, this is my lesson plan for 10 weeks. Alright, so saya tunjuk ni 10 weeks lalu dulu ya. Saya dah prepare untuk uh, sebenarnya as usual I will prepare for them uh, for 14 weeks. But if you can see here is, alright, uh, what I did here is, uh, this is this is uh, the flow of learning happen uh, between me and student and I give this plan to the student much earlier. Alright, so meaning that to, to make sure that okay they know that what they need to, to do uh, for the following week, what, what they need to complete and everything. So if you can see here is uh, the, the, the one of the code I teach is the interactive multimedia. Alright, so this is uh, the, 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 the CLO, this is uh, the context. So normally uh, I will not conduct my class to explain what other function did not it's just, just the, 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 the context that I want to I want to discuss but normally what I did here is I will do the online session class and also I will do uh, the synchronous mode uh, but I like to use YouTube as a channel to uh, to give my input and information and also I use the Padlet and Google site and normally I will design my student instruction so biasanya saya akan cakap lebih kurang dalam 40 minit hingga 50 minit but most of the hours is focused on the student activity within the hours and at that particular of time I can assess the students all right through reflections and and try to understand their knowledge Alright, so daripada minggu ketiga sampai lah minggu keempat it's, it's actually continuous because of I trade my uh, workflow as a process So kalau tengok di sini, alright This is other process, okay Yang pelajar-pelajar ini kena lalui, alright This is other process, okay For 14 weeks, alright Saya buat ini untuk 14 weeks, ada tugasan-tugasan yang mereka kena buat but I very very careful with a time setting. So meaning that every time the activity that I give to the students, for example here, I will provide them with a times and also duration to make sure that they can complete the task within the hours. 
Alright, so this is the examples of the workflow that I did for my students. So when when the real class happened, okay. Okay, when the real class happened is for this particular uh, courses I use the Padlet, alright, not the LMS. Okay. Sorry. So this is at the Padlet. Okay. You also can apply uh, this into your learning management systems. Okay. This is how I start my class. All right. Introduce themselves. All right. Draw the expectation, teaching and goals, what they aspire, uh, what they are looking at. And also, I do put a lot of visuals here. They can use their mind mapping. I think most of most of us do it this in our classrooms. And but I always put a questions and ask them a questions. So this is the process that to be done by the students for fourteen weeks. So a lot of the process. Okay. So ada banyak proses yang terlibat di sini. Alright. So ada banyak engagement and this engagement need the student to be more responsible and also the student need to need to uh, really really um, uh, put effort on this. Alright. So I will ask them a question, a reflections. Okay. So all the students use uh, this, this, the, these are the students uh, uh, doing their tasks and assignments. So uh, there is a Q and A. These are the works and many more. So nanti boleh share ya. Nanti ya. Nanti saya share dengan slide ini. Insyaallah. Alright. So uh, ini bagus. Ini bagus satu. Uh, salah satu contoh yang saya bertunjukkan melalui Padlet. Ada juga contoh-contoh melalui LMS. Ada juga contoh-contoh melalui Google Classroom. Because of when you choose the technology, must be a reason why you choose the technology. Because of I'm dealing with the interactive multimedia, put me so much on visual learning. So I use a Padlet because of it can give me some kind of experience. All right. Itu sebab sedikit lah ya. For a uh, few hours ni tak berapa sempat lah kita nak tengok semua sekali kan. All right. And also, uh, I just want to share with you uh, the best and the powerful tools you can use to curate your great learning experience is using portfolio. Alright, so the e-portfolio can be fall under course portfolio, integrated portfolio or professional portfolio. So as what you can see here is, this is the examples of the professional portfolio that I did uh, for myself to showcase my best evidence of success. Alright, um, what more? I have the Student portfolio, this is the student portfolio. So this is how they curate their learning experience but at the same time the supports of their assessment. So the students, uh, uh, the school practical training session, uh, normally students use the uh, the logbook but I replace with the e-portfolio which the student uh, use the e-portfolio to reflect, to attach their document, to share their uh, to share their video, to share their images, and it become more one, uh, become uh, more dynamics and more interesting to 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 read at. And this is also the student individual portfolio. Uh, for your information, uh, for my department, uh, we encourage students to have the student portfolio in which they can collect the evidence of work start from semester one until semester six, and it can be the combination of. Uh, their best work uh, along the periods of time bila, 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 bila mereka berada dalam pengajian mereka. Alright. So this is one of the other portfolio that I use. This one I gunakan YouTube. Alright. So this is also the evidence based portfolio. Uh, normally uh, yang ini tak boleh lagi dah creating. This one you can create. So ada banyak juga bahan-bahan yang saya buat di sini. Alright. Dalam masa 80 hari, I got 1.72k subscriber. So, uh, dalam sibuk buat kerja-kerja lain tu, uh, YouTube uh, adalah salah satu platform yang saya gunakan to uh, to apa, to to develop my learning materials. Okay, and um, not only start with curate, but again I said we need to have the kind of uh, curating skills, and after that easy for us to become the content creator, and we share our thought and wisdom uh, with the students. Alright. Okay, um, yang ini berlaku pada waktu sebelum COVID, I think that um, I try to bring the contextual learning uh, 
and gain the experience normally uh, we most of us like to bring students at the real situation cases for example uh, for this activity expression learning by prof john sabro this one uh, dengan kerjasama banyak faculty yang ini alright so saya juga mengajar kadang-kadang i think that uh, when, we, when we talk about uh, to translating our Uh, content into contextual, kalau kita boleh tengok gambar, designing instruction, making a sandwich. Okay, this one, the one, one, one of the best activity, a student like it very much because of, uh, biasanya, uh, student ni, the uh, weaknesses is the to understand the instructions. So, what I did here is, can you uh, take my position as an educator, how best you can give me the instruction to make sure the student can understand. Cuma tinggal, I tak buatlah macam contoh, Uh, I tak buatlah bentuk akademik sangat, I kata how can you transfer your knowledge by making a sandwich same as what you instruct and they can produce the same output as what you teach them. So these are the things yang kita kata when we bring the contextual learning and gain the experience so the, the, the environment become different, the experience become more greater because of the, you try to relate them with the, the real life meaning. So. Yes, the instruction can be at anywhere. Just bring the context. I kata, okay, why don't you make the sandwich? Then, pada masa yang sama juga, I do always love to uh, to bring the simulation in the classroom. Uh, kalau macam dekat yang tadi ni, designing instruction, making a sandwich uh, untuk pelajar-pelajar undergraduates, untuk pelajar-pelajar postgrad, biasanya saya, saya, saya suka gunakan uh, simulations or role play. Apa yang saya buat adalah, most of them is a, a, a teachers, uh, saya kebetulan pula mengajar subject assessment and evaluations. So what I did here is I bring the 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 real exam papers and do all the simulation in the classroom and do kind of the process, do kind of the discourse and we make the class more interesting instead of having too much lecture and whatnot. So this is how I shifting my, my, my traditional uh, lecturing to Uh, more engaging, uh, more uh, active uh, learning in, in the context of uh, current now. Alright, so same goes with the uh, same goes with here. The using iPad for the technology to create learning content, the student project, and they what we want is they, they they get the knowledge, they enjoy the session, and the most important part is they can regulate the knowledge for future. That's the reason why learning experience assessment is something that need to be aligned together. We need to create, we need to understand, and then we can facilitate them with a good, uh, a good uh, learning experience for them. All right. So with that, um, thank you. That's it. All right. So I look forward. If you have a uh, questions or anything, I try to answer. We have maybe about the last fifteen minutes. Um, That's for me. I, I think that if you free that, uh, please you can subscribe my Facebook uh, page. Normally, uh, most of the educators will ask me a questions. Uh, from PM Dr. Majida Puti, one of uh, one of the uh, kata apa, the active uh, user of my Facebook. All right. So you can uh, you can ask a question. You can ask anything. I try to to help you. You accept, or you also can access my Twitter, and also you can uh, subscribe my YouTube channel. Uh, to get more information and whatnot. All right. So um, yes, do you have any question? Also, uh, so I try to review all the question. Napa jadi banyak soalan-soalan yang ditanya tu? All right. So I will stop sharing. Okay. Now kita nak tengok kepada soalan. Boleh je buka uh, uh, apa? I mute the mic and ask a question. Salam, Dr. Samson. In your opinion. What is your vision to to uh, an ideal scenario experiential learning using the current digital technologies? All right. So uh, I think that uh, as a start, as a start, we as a start, uh, maybe uh, what I can propose here is um, do lots of uh, what we call uh, engagement by asking a questions. All right. So that's the the simplest one. So maybe you can use the technology such a padlet because of that one you can use uh, synchronously and then they can they can feed up the they can feed up the what we call the uh, the comment or the view of the students and I think that uh, other than uh, having that maybe you can use a video you maybe can can use the sounds just to give the experience meaning that instead of having a auditory or you just uh, lecture in front of the your MacBook. 
give them some kind of attachment such a video anything uh, a quizzes um macam tadi macam tadi I pakai menti apa mentimeter kan at least you can can have the experience and the student really appreciate the experience and they can engage from that so the the simplest one is if you can do as what I practice today is sufficient enough for you all right doctor is always a good session with you thank you so much can we get UITM run the dedicated server for our online exam? Uh, yeah, uh, now we are looking towards on that, Dr. Andrian Hussein. Uh, uh, I think that uh, the ISAP is uh, looking towards on improving the system. We are also uh, highlighting the issue of online exam. Inshallah, uh, they are doing some of upgrading. Uh, any, uh, any updating about the online exam, we will uh, put up uh, for all our work, inshallah. All right. As for your information, uh, one of the initiative of online exam is the QBS, but uh, the QBS is only focused on the uh, preparing the exam questions. But uh, with the with the current now, the online exam is very important. So we try to improve our system time to time. All right. So any questions? I hope that. Uh, for the two hour session, I, I, I do agree that it's not enough uh, uh, to share with you, especially when we talk about the examples, but uh, it's something uh, good to start with, inshallah, all right? Any questions? And uh, <clears throat> All right. So with that, uh, if no questions, I would like to thank uh, to UITM Pera, Hytel, uh, the, organ the organizer, and also to all the participants. I think that 251 Teddy Full House. <laughs> thank you so much for joining this uh, webinar. I appreciate that. Uh, <laughs> ramai ni, Doctor. Ramai, ya? Yeah. Oh, ramai. Dia uh, uh, request nak masuk lagi. Yeah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> uh, I think that kalau pakai Webex, can up to 1,000. Hai. Mungkin. Ah, boleh boleh up to 1000 takut. Tapi aku takut ada echo doktor. Ada echo sikit kan? Ah, ah, ah. Echo, echo, echo ni bila dia terlalu ramai sebab kita dah test dengan ISAP hmm. tu. Hmm. Buat training Webex. Pakai echo? Webex. Wah, pakai uh, banyak echo. Ah, echo. Dengan doktor ah uh, doktor Din, doktor Din. Doktor Din ni. Ah, ha, itu doktor Din punya session tu. Ah, uh, banyak echo. So sekitar tu lah. doktor. But, but uh, I hope that uh, every showers can uh, enjoy the session. It's just a sharing one. Mm. Saya, nak, saya, saya nak minta maaf lah jika ada kekurangan dan sebagainya So thank you for the Hytel organizer uh, uh, Thank you doctor for sharing uh, Okay sebelum tu doktor kita nak ambil gambar ramai-ramai boleh? Eh boleh uh, Doktor pakai skrin doktor yang cantik tu Banyak yang, mana? Banyak, yang boleh banyak gambar <laughs> Banyak gambar Boleh view semua great uh, uh. Saya ni boleh view semua betul? Ha uh, kan? Doktor pakai great lah Sekejap eh saya cuba uh. snap Jangan Tapi kena on kan, uh, peserta kena on kamera kan ah, Kalau boleh on kamera lagi bagus Haa ah, kan okay. ah, Boleh on sekejap Haa ah. Haa ah. Oh semua nak nak keluar dah <laughs> Ada kelas kot doktor, ada kelas ah, Itulah, itulah. Nah, tapi saya cuba capture sekejap Saya pun nak ikon capture sekejap Kamera rosak, ah, kesiannya Okay, ada kelas ni Ah yeah. Alright. Okay, I pass over to you. Alright. Okay, thank you, Doctor. Welcome. Okay, thank you all uh, for sharing uh, this session, Doctor. There's so much information about the creating ni. Ramai nak tahu pasal creating ni sebenarnya. Betul. <coughs> Ramai nak tahu macam mana uh, ni ni. So kita kita akan jumpa lagi, Doctor. Kita akan invite Doctor untuk the next session, insya Allah. Insya Allah. Okay, uh, Doctor, boleh share screen yang Doctor uh, share tadi tak? Gambar. Uh, share sekarang. Ah, boleh. Boleh kejap eh. Ah, uh, entire screen. Jadi ni ke? Kejap jap. Belum. Tak apa. Is it this one? Uh, tak nampak dah tu. Tak nampak eh kejap jap. Saya buka saya punya kejap eh. This one. Ah, tapi semua eh. Ah. Uh -huh. Okay, jap. Saya try try to sebab ramai dah left ni kot. Ha, tadi yang sebelum tadi pun saya dah ambil juga tadi sebelum. Ah, okay, okay, okay. 
Nanti saya share dengan you. Ramai juga eh Doktor saya ambil gambar. Alhamdulillah. Appreciate saya sebab ramai yang join. Terima kasih banyak. Ramai join. Thank you so much. Okay. Ada yang tanya begini, live streaming macam mana nak sign attendance? Ah, live streaming is uh, uh, live streaming is uh, kita, uh, kita kan, saya tak tahu macam mana komunikasi dengan live streaming ah, with the kan? people. Ah. Okay, okay. Ah, boleh boleh minta bantuan rakan-rakan yang tak dapat join ni live streaming boleh share uh, Google form dengan presentation link ni dengan uh, dekat rakan-rakan lah. Ya, ya. Ah, sebab kita participants kan uh, ramai. Ah, thank you so much doktor. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you again. Okay, thank you right. so thank much. You thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Assalamualaikum. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi.